So this is not a news alert, but political polarization is a real problem, and we all know it. What I think fewer of us know are what are the causes of political polarization, and what can we do to avoid that political polarization and maybe promote some healing. So today, I'm going to share with you three key causes of political division and polarization, and then I'm going to share with you three key strategies for fighting political polarization in your world. Okay, so let's start with the causes of political division. First is a balkanized media environment. So what do I mean by that? Well, when I was a young kid, and through most of my growing up, people got their news from essentially either their local newspaper, the New York Times, the Wall Street Journal, the Los Angeles Times, the Washington Post, or three news networks, CBS, NBC, and ABC. Now, there were many downsides to that because a very few set of news organizations controlled what most Americans knew about the world and what was going on in it. But the upside of that was that we all had a shared view or sense of the world around us. Fast forward to today, however, where we have very, very niche media environments. So in the broadcast arena, we have things like OAN and Fox that tend to be for conservatives or people on the right. And then we have MSNBC and some might even argue CNN for people on the left. Then think about the role of Twitter or Truth Social or Facebook, right? These are ways that many of us get our news, but it's not objective in any way because most of us cultivate these cocoons of similar views, similar tastes, and similar interests. And so what happens is we have a very distorted reality of what's important, what other people think, and what the other side thinks. And this balkanized media environment tends to give the impression that people who think differently from us think much more differently than in fact they do, and it exacerbates uh, differences around viewpoint and opinion more than they actually exist. It also makes it harder to come to a shared idea of what is true or what is real. So even facts are in debate now. So second, one of the things that we've seen over the past 20 years are changing demographic trends. Specifically, we have seen people with similar viewpoints tend to move closer to each other, such that our neighbors and those around us tend to have the same political views. And what that means is that there's less exposure in a day-to-day -day way to people who have different views than our own. Uh, and that is not good for the country in all sorts of ways. In fact, I think it even lends to allegations around election denialism. Uh, because if I'm only talking to people who share my viewpoints, and then suddenly in an election, I see the other side win, I find that perplexing. And I find that perplexing because I think it can't possibly be the case that there are so many people on the other side and I know none of them. And I have seen this on both sides, right? In 2020, clearly there are a set of people who believe that the election was stolen. But I also saw huge amounts of surprise and doubt in 2016. In fact, I was at an election night party in 2016 where literally people were in tears, their jaw on the ground, not believing that President Trump could possibly have been elected. And so these demographic trends, the ways people are moving in this country, has really contributed to political polarization. A third reason for increasing political polarization is what I would call bad and I dare say even irresponsible leadership. So what do I mean by that? Well, one of the ways in which leaders can gain support is by using fear, by cultivating fear of the other. And in our country over the past decade, we have seen this tactic used much more frequently. So what quality leaders do is actually 
work with the other side to find shared interests and shared values and actually get things done on behalf of citizens. So one of the things we've seen on both the far left and the far right is leaders who try to demonize and villainize people who have different views. So it is absolutely true that there are bad actors on both sides of the political fence. It is also not true that most people on the left are, quote, woke or, quote, socialist. It is also not true that most people on the right are, quote, racist or, quote, fascist. But people who engage in demagoguery are more likely to talk about their political opponents in these extremely unhealthy and unhelpful ways. Okay, so this is pretty depressing. We have a balkanized media environment. We're surrounded by people who think and act like us. And then we have a growing set of leaders who instead of working across the aisle to find connection are trying to in fact enhance or increase polarization. So what can each of us do to fight political polarization in our own world? Let me give you three tips. First, work actively to diversify your own sources of news and information. So for example, if you are on Twitter, as I am, actively try to follow some people who look at the world differently from you. Or if you are somebody who often looks at Fox, spend some time looking at MSNBC or reverse. But even better, and this is something that I have found to be extremely effective, Instead of just getting your news sources from partisans on both sides, see if there are some ways you can get a more neutral or even objective view of reality. I think that's harder and harder to do in the US context. To be clear, I don't think it's impossible. But a strategy I have found to be really effective is actually looking to international news sources to get my news about the United States. So, for example, I find sources like Euronews or The Guardian or the BBC as very good ways of balancing my own sense of what's happening in my own country. Second, actively work to strike up conversations on politics with people who are different from you. Okay, I hope I'm not losing you here because I'm imagining some of you are thinking like, this guy is crazy. Like the last thing I want to do is start a political conversation and get into a fight with someone who is on the other side of some hot button topic. So I want to be clear, I'm not inviting you to have a fight, but I am encouraging you to strike up a genuine political conversation with someone who thinks differently from you. Why does that matter? Because I think that if we do that with a listening ear and with sincerity, what we find is not that we see the issue similarly, because we probably won't. But what we find is that the person with whom we're speaking isn't a villain. They probably have a pretty good set of reasons for why they think the way they think. And that helps reduce polarization. There's lots of edifying things about running this YouTube channel, but one of them is that a whole set of random people that I don't know watch these videos. And hey, thank you for watching. But one of the real gifts of this channel is some time ago, somebody who has very different political views than me uh, sent me a note and I would say started in a way that felt a little bit hostile. And I thought, I'm gonna engage this person. And so I acknowledged their differences. Um, I said, I'm so glad that they watched my channel. And then I asked them a few questions about why they felt the way they did. Lo and behold, instead of responding in a hostile or defensive way, they actually responded in a very open and friendly way. And we had a number of back and forth exchanges that felt extremely edifying to me. And while I can't know for sure, I think was extremely edifying to the person on the other side. And in fact, if you're watching this video right now, thank you. But that experience for me reminded me of just how important it is to engage conversations instead of getting defensive. And what that means is doing a lot of listening, a lot of asking questions, but also really feeling free to share your own viewpoint and not just the conclusion, but also why you feel the way you do. And I think the more we do that, the more the polarization starts to melt 
And the more we can actually problem solve around the areas where we do have shared views and shared interests. So instead of simply saying, oh, the way to solve immigration is to put up a wall, or oh, those other people think that there is no immigration policy. If we actually start to listen to each other, we actually start to realize that most of us think that the immigration system is broken. Now, that is a sad place to start, but it's a shared place to start. And if we all agree it's broken, then at least we have something to work on in terms of how to fix it. And if we could talk about how to fix it instead of blaming each other, that's a reduction of polarization. And this leads to my third and really critical piece of advice, which is as much as possible, resist what I would call black and white or all or nothing thinking and embrace nuance. Most of the really controversial issues facing our country, whether it is immigration, whether it is climate change, whether it is our policy in, with respect to Ukraine, all of these issues are complicated. They involve science, they involve people's lives, they involve the economy, they involve really tough choices around how to spend limited resources. And the notion that somehow these issues are susceptible to incredibly simplistic right or wrong, you know, good guy or bad guy thinking is just inaccurate. And so whenever I want to paint the other side as a problem, it's helpful for me to be like, no, 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 this is much more complicated than it seems. Most real problems are nuanced and require a nuanced approach. So some of you may be Star Wars fans. Um, I grew up in the generation of Star Wars and uh, it's my favorite set of movies. And if you think about Darth Vader, right? Darth Vader in those first few films seemed essentially wholly evil and bad. And yet what we learn, if you're aware of that trilogy, right, is that he's actually a pretty complicated figure. And even he had some redeeming qualities. So political polarization, right, if we do not solve it as a country, we will not be a country. And it's really easy to feel powerless in the face of increasing polarization. But my invitation today is to say, there are things each of us can do. First, work really hard to diversify your own sources of news and information. Secondly, whenever you can, strike up conversations on politics with people who are different from you. And there are all sorts of ways of finding them. And third, when you feel that temptation to villainize or simplify a really complex issue, resist it, embrace the nuance, and lean into the complexity of the problem. So if you want to keep on exploring issues around political polarization, watch this next video, which is how does political polarization lead to gridlock in Congress? Okay, you want to keep learning about polarization, click, 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 or keep binging this channel.